Thanks for joining us for the Member Excite presentation. The Member Excite presentation is informative, interesting to the audience, and showcases the strengths of the presenter as an entrepreneur and their area of expertise. It's not a sales pitch, it's a 10 minute educational and insightful exploration into what they do. And of course, it's exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our BX Excite presenter today. Fiona came from Informed Health Mind Body Nutrition to present to us on what you need to know about stress. Some people feel stressed, some people have secret stress and are unaware that what they are experiencing is stress. Fiona will be discussing how to recognize stress and what to do about it. You will be surprised. For those of you who don't know Fiona, Fiona Kane is an experienced and award-winning nutritional medicine practitioner, mind-body eating coach and holistic counselor. Fiona does one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching consultations with individuals via telehealth video and also runs online group health programs. Fiona is also a speaker on health and nutrition with appearances on 2GB, Ticker TV, 6PR, ABC Radio and Triple M. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Fiona Kane. Hi, my name is Fiona Kane from Informed Health Mind Body Nutrition. I'm here to um, so I'm talking about stress today and I want to just quickly give you a little bit of background on me so you can understand why I understand stress so well. Um, I, when I was in my, I'm 50 now, I'll be 51 in a few weeks and it, when I was 25 I had a stroke and it wasn't the first one, I had one before that that I didn't know about. So essentially I had a bit of brain damage going on and then I found out I had two autoimmune diseases and I've been living with those kind of health issues and I do have kind of brain damage that have my heart and my for the last 25 years. So that was very stressful and very challenging and I do have some ongoing health issues but largely using nutritional medicine and the counselling skills that I've learned, I've come a long way. <laughs> I'm a lot healthier than I was in mind and body. But, you know, it's a work in progress. Uh, last year, I started running our stress less program, and the first time I ran it was actually when my mother was in palliative care. So I literally would be in palliative care with my mum and then walk out onto the balcony of the palliative care place and do my videos and do my online stuff. So I do know about stress. I'm very well acquainted with it, intimately acquainted with it. And I have a tendency for emotional eating, which is something I teach a lot of people about, and I don't teach them about it because I'm perfect, I teach them about it because I get it. So anyway, Short, short version of that is I get it. I'm not preaching, I just I get it because we're human and we're having a human experience and it can be really challenging, right? So I want to talk to you about some things about gut stress. So first of all, some people are very aware that they're stressed and some people are not. So ways to know that you might be stressed. It could be that you're having that, you are doing that emotional eating, right? Having an energy top of the night or you're having that, that glass of wine, you can't relax unless you have that glass of wine at night. It could be because your teeth grinding, or you've got very tight neck and tight shoulders. It could be because you're snapping at your loved ones, or you just feel like you're running and running and running and just but never achieving anything. Or maybe you're having trouble relaxing and sleeping. So they're all signs that you're stressed. So your body knows it if you're not aware of it. So if you do become aware of it, it's a good idea to start to do some things to address that, which is what we teach our clients all the time. Uh, you can't avoid the fact that stress happens if your stress is there. So it's not about avoiding stress. Well, obviously avoid it when you can avoid it. Like if you can just not buy into certain situations, then fantastic. But the truth is the stress is going to happen. So it's how you respond to it. I need to go and beat the door. So I don't think, bang, bang. Yeah. <laughs> I should be doing <laughs> So it's about how you respond to stress. That's what matters. But anyway, I wanted to share with you some studies today to give you some good news about stress because we have all heard all of the health problems that are related to stress. Uh, you know, with heart disease being a really big one there. Um, and we've heard so much of bad issues. And, and the same is true, and there's a lot of studies to show it connects stress with health problems. We do know that. However, the way you think about stress has a really, really big impact on how the lack of stress affects you and whether or not it affects your health. I think it's important information to share, so that's what I'm going to do today. So, you know, 
we know that when we have a stress response, or some of us, right? maybe you don't know, but often it's that kind of, you know, your heart starts to beat faster when you're breathing, and you sort of, oh, okay, yeah, you know, you, you get that physical response to stress. And many of us perceive that as a negative thing because it sort of happens to us right when we're having a bit of an anxiety attack because we're going to have to go and speak or do something. But I want to tell you that that response is actually a really healthy response. Um, it's not a healthy response if you're going into a massive panic attack every single time and it's, it's you know, it's totally ruining your life. But in general, that, the beginning of that, that point of that is a healthy response. And knowing that it's a healthy response is really good because if you understand that, you know that your body's working with you. So, you know, so what if you knew that as your body becomes energized and prepared for the challenge, as opposed to, ah, 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 you know, it's like, okay, this is my body preparing this, I can do the thing. Great, this is my body great, wow. Right? It's a very different way of looking at it. And this is precisely what they told participants in the study to do. So this was at Harvard University, so they were going to a social stress test. And they were taught to reframe their stress response as helpful. So when they had that response, oh wow, this is my body preparing for the brain, you know, as opposed to, you know, that's a different way of looking at it. Um, ultimately, the participants who learned to view the stress, the stress response, as helpful, um, they were less stressed out, less anxious, and more confident. Um, one of the most interesting things was their physical stress response. Though. So in a typical stress response, your heart rate goes up, all those things I just told you about, but the blood vessels constrict. But what they found in this study, they did not constrict. And the constricting blood vessel is the link between heart disease and heart attacks and stress, right? Because if your blood vessels are constricting, you're not getting blood flow. So they found that just by viewing the stress response itself, they go, wow, my body's helping me. The blood vessels just stay normal, so the blood flow stayed normal. So there wasn't that cardiovascular risk, right? So just one thing, just telling yourself that that is a healthy stress response and your body is actually preparing you to deal with the situation makes all the difference between the psychological outcome and the physical outcome. So, you know, they, they said that, um, well, you know, over a lifetime, really, there could be the difference between dying young or getting murdered from the queen. So anyway, uh, that's a big deal, right? It's a really big deal. So we know that how you talk to yourself about stress really matters, what you believe about stress really matters. Um, and we have actually got a hormone called oxytocin, and none of you might recognise what that is, and you may recognise as well, but essentially it's that, that hormone that you have when it's related to childbirth, it's related to breastfeeding, and it's related to puppy, right? So it's that kind of like baby hormone that makes you not kill a baby and uh, <laughs> look after it in your right? So women really know that hormone quite well because we're made too, because that's been made now too. survival of the, the you know, species. Yeah. So it's really important that we have that. And we actually also have that, you might have heard of, um, of the stress response, like there's a, um, there's a fight or flight, or rest and digest. So the fight or flight is a sort of run from the thing, or I'm going to fight the bear, because it's literally your body thinks you're about to get eaten by a bear. And then there's rest and digest, which is I'm relaxed and fine, I can digest and I can do normal things. But there's a third response, um, and that is, and women tend to do that because we've had to historically. Because again, when the tribe is being attacked, you probably have to look after the children, maybe goats or whatever. <laughs> um, so you, you, didn't, you couldn't run, and you may or may not have been able to fight because she might have been looking after the babies. Right? So we tend to be free. So when women are having stress, we're more likely to call our girlfriends and say, oh, please, please, please. Whereas men are part of the right? So, and that oxytocin makes a big difference to our stress. It really makes a difference in how it gets you help. So letting that help someone, with permission, <laughs> <laughs> will ask for help in those situations is really, really important mm. because um, that tended to befriend response is actually a really healthy part of the stress response. Uh, and, uh, and if we do that more, again, we don't get the health outcomes. And um, so that's a really important thing to know, oxytocin. Now, 
other thing I wanted to show you though is a couple of other studies that it's really relevant to show you about these studies, about the way you think about stress. So they had a study where they tracked a thousand adults in the United States, ranging from 34 to 93 years old. And they started by asking how much stress have you experienced in the last year? They also asked how much time have you spent helping out friends, neighbours or people in the community? And they used public records for the next five years to find out who died. Every major stressful event in people's lives, like financial difficulties or family crisis, increased the risk of dying by 30%. But it wasn't true for everyone. People spent time who spent time caring for others, their risk was no higher. Oxytocin, because you also get oxytocin when you're the time you use for other people. And also, I would argue we don't have from thinking about other people when not obsessing. So, and there's a difference between having healthy boundaries and practicing self care and helping other people. So, like some people don't have any self care and only look after other people, that's not healthy. However, um, when stress is happening, if you go out and do something kind for other people, that makes a big difference to your health profile and you can do sort of that nice oxytocin, you know, that pain and all this stuff, right? So it's really powerful. Another study, this one is huge because it's such a big study too. This is 30,000 adults were in the study. And they tracked them, I think it was over eight years from now. And what they did again, they asked them a few questions. So they had said, have you had significant stress over the last 12 months? And then they said, and do you believe that stress is harmful to your health? or not, right? And what they ended up is they had three groups. They had the group that had been very stressed over the last 12 months and thought that the stress was harmful to their health. The group that had been very stressed over the last 12 months but thought it was not harmful to their health. And the group that hadn't been very stressed, right? So there were three groups. The really interesting thing is that people who had experienced a lot of stress the previous year they had a 43% increased risk of dying, but it was only true for the ones who believed stress was harmful to their health. The people who had the least risk of dying in the study were the people who had significant stress but did not think it was harmful to their health. That's worth repeating. The people who had the least risk were the people who had the higher amount of stress but believed that it was not harmful to their health. So the belief that stress is harmful to you, or the belief that it is not, it's like Henry Ford said, what he said, he said, um, if you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you're right. It's the same sort of thing, right? So if you think that stress is harmful to your health, it is. If you think that stress is not harmful to your health, it's not. So your mind is calm. It doesn't mean I'm not encouraging you to do other things for health, because I think we need to do lots of things to manage our stress and physical health. But isn't it amazing to know that just the way you think about it makes all the difference? Um, so what they found is that um, based on this, they estimated that 182,000 Americans in those eight years died prematurely, not from stress, but from the belief that stress is bad for you. That's over 20,000 deaths a year. Yeah. And, um, they said that would have made believing stress is bad for you the 15th largest cause of death in the USA that year, right? So that was killing more people than skin cancer, HIV, and homicide, right? So the belief that stress is bad for you is a toxic belief, and it will be true if you believe it. So I personally think that is really, really powerful knowledge to have, and I think the more that we understand we understand, yes, the physical stuff about the stress response, but we also understand how the way we think about our stress response makes a huge difference in our mental health, but absolutely our physical health. So we have a lot of power when it comes to this, and these are the sort of things I teach with my clients individually, and in our stress test program, it's really, really important to know. And the, the, the one thing you go away with is believing that stress is going to make you sick, is going to make you sick. So stop saying that to yourself. <laughs> There's one thing you go away with, away with is saying, one, when I have a stress response, it's actually healthy because my body is helping me prepare to deal with the situation. And two, stress is not harmful.
helpful to you anyway. If you know those things to be true, then that will make all the difference in your life and in your health. So I hope that that was helpful to everyone. <laughs>